Welcome to a lesson on undamped forced motion and resonance. Let us return to the example of a mass on a spring as pictured here on the right. We will now consider forced oscillation. Going back to the equation that models oscillation and resonance, we have mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals big F of t for some non-zero function big F of t. Recall that m is the mass, c is the friction or dampening constant, k is the spring constant, and big F of t is an external force acting on the mass. We are interested in periodic forcing, such as non-centered rotating parts, or perhaps loud sounds, or other sources of periodic force. Once we learn about Fourier series, we will see that we can cover all periodic functions by simply considering big F of t equals big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t. Because we're considering undamped force motion, the dampening constant or friction constant c is equal to zero, giving us the simplified differential equation mx double prime plus kx equals big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t. Recall the general solution is equal to the sum of the complementary solution and a particular solution. In this case, the equation has the complementary solution x sub c shown below, which is the solution to the associated homogeneous equation. Recall the characteristic equation for the associated homogeneous equation is mr squared plus k equals zero, giving us r equals plus or minus i times the square root of k divided by m. So because we have two complex solutions, remember this indicates the form of the complementary solution where omega sub zero is equal to the square root of k divided by m. Omega sub zero is called the natural frequency. It is the frequency at which the system wants to oscillate without external interference. And now before we can determine that particular solution, we need to consider two cases, where one case is omega sub zero doesn't equal omega sub one, and the second case is when omega sub zero equals omega sub one. Let's consider the first case where omega sub zero doesn't equal omega sub one. Find a particular solution, we let x sub p equal a cosine omega one t plus b sine omega one t. However, we will find that b is equal to zero, giving us x sub p equals a cosine omega one t. From here, we would use the method of undetermined coefficients, not shown here, to determine the value of a, where a is equal to big F sub zero divided by the product of m and the difference of omega zero squared and omega one squared which gives us a particular solution, x sub p, shown here at the bottom. Now that we have the complementary solution and a particular solution, we have a formula for the general solution when omega sub zero doesn't equal omega sub one. The general solution is shown here at the top, where again omega sub zero doesn't equal omega sub one. This can also be expressed in the form shown below. Before we look at the second case where omega sub zero equals omega sub one, let's look at an example. And again, as soon as we know omega sub zero doesn't equal omega sub one, we can determine the general solution by simply performing substitution into our formula. Given 0.5 x double prime plus eight x equals 10 times cosine of pi t, where x of zero equals zero, and x prime of zero equals zero, first notice m is equal to 0.5, k is equal to eight, f sub zero is equal to 10, omega sub one is equal to pi, and then we calculate omega sub zero, which is equal to the square root of k divided by m, giving us omega sub zero equals four. Notice omega sub one doesn't equal omega sub zero, and therefore we simply perform substitution into the formula above to determine the general solution shown here as x. And then of course the second step is to determine c sub one and c sub two using the initial conditions, which gives us c sub one equals negative 20 divided by the quantity 16 minus pi squared and c sub two equals zero, giving us the particular solution below. And the graph of the motion is also shown here on the right. And now let's consider the second case where omega sub zero equals omega sub one. Since omega sub zero equals omega sub one, we'll just use omega. We have the same complementary solution, x sub c equals c sub one cosine omega t plus c sub two sine omega t, this time though, we can't try the same form of the particular solution because omega sub zero equals omega sub one. We have to let x sub p equal c sub one times t times cosine omega t plus c sub two times t times sine omega t. Again, notice the extra factors of t because 
omega sub zero equals omega sub one. From here, we can take our differential equation, divide through by m, and then substitute x sub p and x sub p double prime in the left side. And if we simplify, we get the equation below. And now if we equate the coefficients, we will find that a is equal to zero and b is equal to f sub zero divided by the product of two m and omega, giving us a particular solution, x sub p equals f sub zero divided by the product of two m and omega times t times sine omega t, giving us a general solution when omega sub zero equals omega sub one, shown below. And now let's take a closer look at this general solution. The important term is the last term, which notice has a factor of t in it. This term grows without bound as t approaches infinity. In fact, it oscillates between f sub zero t divided by the product of two m and omega and negative f sub zero times t divided by the product of two m and omega. The first two terms oscillate between plus or minus the square root of c sub one squared plus c sub two squared, which becomes smaller and smaller in proportion to the oscillations of the last term as t gets larger. In figure 2.6 below, we see the graph with c sub one equals c sub two equals zero, f sub zero equals two, m equals one, and omega equals pi. By forcing the system into just the right frequency, we can produce wild oscillations. This kind of behavior is called resonance, or perhaps pure resonance. Sometimes resonance is desired. For example, remember, when as a kid you could start swinging by just moving back and forth on the swing set in the correct frequency? You were trying to achieve resonance. The force of each one of your moves was small, but after a while it produced large swings. On the other hand, resonance can be destructive. In an earthquake, some buildings collapse while others may be relatively undamaged. This is due to different buildings having different resonance frequencies. Figuring out resonance frequency can be very important. I hope you found this helpful.